National Statistical Office moves to become more effective. Postage stamps launched for APEC PNG and SDGs. And Planning Minister flags major dairy project for Morabe. This is the National MTV News with Meriba Tulo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us for Monday's news. Two-thirds of the country's dairy needs will be produced out of Lay City when a new project comes into operation in 2019. National Planning Minister Richard Maru met with landowners who will be part owners of the 150 million Kina project at Yellow. The Israeli investor, Innovative Agro Industries, says it expects to reduce the cost of milk by 40%. Discussions for the project at Yalu began five years ago and yesterday the planning minister arrived with the Israeli investors. Innovative Agro Industries will be developing the dairy farm. The farm is expected to produce two-thirds of Papua New Guinea's dairy requirements. The primary aim is to slash the amount of imports coming in from New Zealand and Australia. Our government intends to totally replace all imported dairy products that we, we currently import from Australia and New Zealand. Annual uh, import bill is, is stands at around 400 million. The landowners will become part owners of the project. The current value of their land will be converted into shares. They'll also grow corn commercially to feed the cows that will be producing milk. The market is big enough to cater for a larger scale enterprise. The locally produced milk is expected to cost an average of two kina or as much as a can of coke. So this can be a major project to create import replacement as well. Project can kill up by making more land on us too, or by they look out them good ground ball instead of siding them about now. Or they can make him project like planting or wheat now, planting uh, corn. The planning minister has also challenged the super funds and other landowner companies to invest in the project instead of spending their money overseas. The market is already waiting. We don't even have to look for a market. A lot of the feed will be provided by local outgrowers. You have a market that's waiting, you have good infrastructure here, cost of milk will be lower, and I can see this to be a very viable business. Scott Wyde, National MTV News, Lay. Post PNG and the United Nations have officially launched nine stamps commemorating PNG's efforts to host the 2018 APEC meeting and as an implementer for the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. The stamps are designed to illustrate each major factor that contributes to achieving sustainable and economic development. United Nations Resident Coordinator Roy Trivedi says PNG is the first country in the world to have sustainable development goals on the stamps and thanked Post PNG for taking up the challenge. PNG will be hosting APAC in 2018 with a lead-up meeting, the informal senior officials meeting beginning tomorrow. In celebration of PNG taking the chairmanship of APAC and to mark the occasion, the United Nations Development Program has partnered with Post PNG to prepare a series of collector stamps. For the, the five peace areas where a, uh, UNDP covers and one for the APAC. The stamps are also designed to illustrate major factors of the Sustainable Development Goals. People, planet, prosperity, peace and partnership have been designed into the stamps. But for this one it's a bit challenging because of those 17 teams. Because all the other stamps I've, I've done in, in the past, like they, they have only one team to work with, which is kind of you know, boring or not exciting. I would say. So for this one, it's like 17 teams. I have to work with 17 teams, so that's how I, it was a good challenge and I'm glad that it's out now. UNDP resident coordinator Roy Chavetti said the stamps are the first in the world to incorporate the SDG goals and the stamps try to show PNG's position as an emerging global leader on the theme of sustainability. Stamps try to do is to position Papua New Guinea as an emerging global leader on the theme of sustainability. The theme for APAC is of course sustainable businesses, sustainable opportunities for all these APAC countries. We know that the APAC is the fastest growing region in the whole world and so on, but we also want to make sure as Papua New Guinea chairs the APAC 
to make sure that it's not just about growth, but it's about sustainable growth. Growth that benefits all the people of Papua New Guinea. Trevedi thanked PNG Post for taking up the challenge that will benefit for PNG Post during APAC. As the stamps will go on sale at the first lead up meeting, the informal senior official meeting that begins tomorrow in the nation's capital. These stamps are not just nice to do things as well, they are going to earn Papua New Guinea a lot of currency. And, and foreign exchange and so on. As we have the 10,000 visitors coming to Papua New Guinea, we hope that everybody will be purchasing these stamps. The first stamps that will officially launch today will be posted to the Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and the APEC Secretariat. There are nine stamps in total. The stamps all have different values from 75 toya, 1 kina 50, 3 kina 40 and 6 kina 80 value. And there are two frame souvenir sets with a nominal value of 20 kina. Adelaide Sirox Kari National, MTV News. Secretary of the Community Development Department, Anna Solomon, has called on all media outlets, especially television stations, to respond to the needs of people with disabilities. All television outlets are to include sign language in some of their programming, and this has to be done before the disability draft bill becomes law. Television stations have an urge to be inclusive. It's the inclusive television. It's the inclusive television. I hope TV1 and MTV are listening. This is the inclusive television. Why? Why? Because you have a sign language interpreter that's sharing this news with the rest of Papua New Guinea. I'm hoping to see that on, T on MTV and I'm hoping to see that on TV1. Papua New Guinea has a deaf population who want to be part and parcel of development and exchange of public information. For six months they've made it their business to continue this program. So that's the mainstreaming we are talking about. We want every agency and every organization out there to take care, to mainstream disability issues into their programs so that it becomes part and partial of their organizations. The Community Development Secretary has appealed to all media outlets, especially television stations, to be inclusive. Fabian Hakalitz, National MTV News. The National Statistical Office will undergo a major restructure to be more dynamic, efficient and effective. The proposed restructure is to make it more robust in meeting capacity building and provide accurate statistics for development planning. This was highlighted in the Stakeholder Statistical Workshop in Port Moresby today. The Stakeholder Statistical Workshop brought together agencies who highlighted the need for quality statistics, vital for policy planning and development. But National Statistician Roko Koloma says NSO is not the only organization to provide statistics. There was an initial decision to reform NSO. And from that day on, we have taken some major steps in looking at ourselves, especially as an organization. And we've been taking criticism as they come, but we have put our heads down to ensure that we have continuously Wake Wake up, NSO is facing some real challenges, amongst others, establishment of statistical units in provinces. Another challenge is on capacity building in terms of delivering national statistics. Coloma says NSO is not the only organization to provide statistics, but also public and private agencies like the National Education Department, Internal Revenue Commission and Central Bank and others that can also provide statistics. The issue with capability and capacity in these agencies. So as part of my statement was trying to encourage them that we should be working together to produce and build this capacity. Uh, education's got a very good database of doing the census, school census every year. But at the same time, I think we, we also realize that they need support in compiling their numbers better and releasing them under the banner of their statistics. Since 2013, NSO has been labelled as a non-functioning office. The proposed restructure is to improve capacity with accurate statistics and data. The national government's funding of 15 million kina is timely. I want to thank the government today after going through the budget book for giving us a favourable response by giving us 15 million kina to start our census next year. 
one million kita to start our house, one million to reforms, and two million to do our several business activities. Stakeholders from United Nations, Australian High Commission, Internal Monetary Fund and other agencies highlighted and stressed the importance of quality statistics. Richard Wilde from the Pacific Financial Technical Assistance Centre, who works closely with NSO for GDP, says improvement is needed for dissemination. The IMF has something called a results-based management framework. Some of you may have your own RBM framework. So we operate with it that it's a way of quantifying all of the different work that that advisors do in the region and that the IMF does around the world. Second thing, the second area we're looking at, administrative data sharing. So as I said, this is a big thing for PIFTAC in the region. Stacey Yellow, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. Ramonico Management has donated 60 new desks and chairs, including sporting gear, to the St. Edward's Primary School in Usinobundi District in Medang Province at the cost of around 10,000 kina. Vice President Zhao Degian emphasized the importance of education for children and the many opportunities it provides. The primary school situated in the Kurumbukari Highland of Usinobundi, which was established in 2011 to help local children enter into the formal education. Moving on, two trainee teachers from the Our Lady of the Sacred Heart Kabaleo Teachers College in East Newton Province will be sponsored by Tropicana Limited to further their education. Managing Director Sandra Lau made the announcement at the recent second combined graduation where she also donated 100,000 kina to Divine Word University's Rabaul campus. Lau is a firm believer in the public-private partnership and respects the work of teachers and nurses. Rabaul Campus Vice President Professor Francine Hombajane thanked Tropicana for the partnership and said the 100,000 kina is specifically for the Science Laboratory Extension. Hombanje said the scholarship of 8,000 kina will pay the fees of two outstanding diploma in primary education students to continue their one-year degree program next year. 186 students graduated with diplomas in education primary teaching and 32 graduated with diploma in general nursing. Newly built and now in operation, the Six Mile Saraga Market Management is encouraging customers and those living around the area to visit and buy from locals in the area. This comes after the management witnessed that there is still more space available in the market and with customers needed, sellers are welcome to come and sell the vegetables. Market management say since the recent opening of the Saraga police station, crime in the area has dropped and it is now safe for customers. With so much space available, vegetable growers and sellers in NCD and Central are encouraged to come and sell their vegetables at Six Mile Market. Market representatives to Watichenko highlighted that the market needs more customers despite not enough sellers in the market. He says the brand new market is backed by a newly opened Saraga police station in the area as well as market security and ensuring the safety of the market sellers and buyers. So now we want to get, uh, we want to put it out on public so that the, the people of Papua New Guinea must know that uh, you also have a market here in NCD. This is one of your market, uh, Six Mile Saraga Market. And area beside the market is also preserved for those selling beetle nuts, other small market sellers selling food items. Tua said while the market is providing what one can find at every other market, sellers are guaranteed safety and security to market all day like. Everybody in NCD, even though uh, throughout um, Central Province, you're most welcome. Please, you feel free to come to this market. Uh, our market is a newly market and it's got the uh, police, 100% secured. We have our security community uh, a community being employed by the uh, Mosby South and uh, now they're working as a security. Uh, they work with the community. Uh, we have 100% support from the community that this market has no problem. Tua says the market is safe, especially for school children to come by after school to buy fruits or visit their friends and families. Uh, we are now ask you all the schools throughout NCD we want you to please, you feel free to come. Come. Sometimes you come around and see a different environment. You need to see 
how our market operates. Sellers and buyers are encouraged to make use of the market. Godwin Eki, National MTV News. Shadow Minister for Finance and Treasury Ian Ling Staki has warned Papua New Guineans to prepare to pay more in the coming year as a result of the government's 2018 national budget. Ahead of the opposition's official budget response, Mr. Ling Staki has released a statement hinting at further price increases for basic household items in the new year. Using the 25% tariffs imposed on dairy products as an example, Mr. Ling Staki says that price increases are inevitable, hinting that price increases may see these products go out of reach for the average wage earner. Items including eggs, meat, cooking oil, detergents, bleach, and even toilet paper, according to Mr. Ling Staki, are in line to see massive price hikes in 2018 as a result of this. In addition, the opposition also believes the increase in import tariffs on petrol and diesel products will also have a negative impact on vehicle owners, with the estimates stating diesel vehicle owners in line to pay as much as 61 toya more per litre in 2018. According to the opposition, the big losers in the 2018 national budget are PNG shoppers and small businesses. The opposition is therefore calling on the government to focus on building our economy on creating PNG industries that are internationally competitive instead of thinking only about the local PNG market. Moving on now to the finance report, and the Kina closed unchanged at 0.3115 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.304 US dollars, 0.3963 Australian dollars, 0.2521 Euro, and 33.88 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, coffee and copper closed higher, gold is trading lower, while cocoa closed the day lower. Copper closed higher, palm oil closed lower, while crude oil is trading lower. And on the stock markets, the Dow Jones closed 40 points lower, the ASX is down 4 points, and the All Ordinaries 4 points lower as well. Here with National MTV News, we'll be back with more right after these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. The people of Japan have donated 68 vehicles for the 2018 APEC meeting. They include minibuses, microbuses and ambulances and were made available from a 13 million kina grant under Japan's non-project grant aid. APEC Minister Justin Chichenko thanked the people of Japan for their continuous support. APEC Minister Justin Tichenko today received the 68 vehicles comprising of 23 minibuses, 23 microbuses and 22 ambulances from the Japan Ambassador Satoshi Nakajima. The vehicles were donated under the 13 million kina non-project grant aid. 68 vehicles, 22 ambulances which are very very important uh, for the operations and security and safety of the event. Uh, 23 minibuses to take our delegates around for the different meetings and the leaders summit as well and uh, also 23 minivans. Now this all goes to promote and support um, having the APEC summit here in Papua New Guinea. Minister Tuchenko thanked the people of Japan for their continuous support. Say thank you to you Ambassador for your long serving support to Papua New Guinea for supporting us uh, in the APEC uh, Leaders Summit and the APEC meetings uh, going forward. Your vehicles are, are very much appreciated and they will be utilised for all logistic exercises for not only our CEOs and Le Leaders Summit coming up next year, but all our other meetings as well that we'll be having over the next 12 months. Japan Ambassador Satoshi Nakajima hope the vehicles will be fully utilized to assist the APEC 2018 meeting and also after the meeting. The debut to the APEC Minister meeting successfully. And today I heard that uh, the, those vehicles will be used for the informal senior officials meeting from starting from today. I sincerely hope that these vehicles will be maintained well and uh, continue to serve the upcoming meetings most effectively throughout the year 2018 and beyond. 
Ambassador Satoshi says he was pleased the vehicles were registered with the plate number BFF as the abbreviation stands for Best Friends Forever. Plate of the vehicles, BS, registration place, starting with BFF. I am very pleased that to hear that BFF is the, the abbreviation of the best friend forever, <laughs> describing the enduring friendship of, uh, and the partnership of our two countries. Adelaide Surak Kari National, MTV News. Gabagaba Village in Rigo District, Central Province has formed its own village authority. The Gabagaba Village Authority will function as a governing body and act as a mouthpiece to ensure government services are delivered to its people. The Gabagaba Village Authority was launched over the weekend by Central Governor Robert Agrobe. This is an initiative by Ward 1 Council of Gabagaba Village, Donald Agarobe, who says the government's presence must be felt at the village level. People are to become as active recipients of goods and services. Four years and um, services from the LLG, my president and the open member is totally non-existent. We go for LLG meetings, we pass budgets, we approve this aid post, that classroom, nothing happens. It's just on paper, there's nothing physically. And um, what else, it's the same everywhere. So I thought I'd, rather than complain, you know, everybody's complaining anyway, nothing's happening. So I told the village people to go back and take ownership. My basic concern was the state of the villages now, especially the Motu and Sa. The new logo for the Gabba Gabba Village Authority was also launched, designed by a student, Robert Gary. It's the official logo chosen because of unique designs that reflects cultural pride. The seven stars on the logo represents the seven different, seven traditional clans of the village. Number two. The Gabba Gabba Village Authority's first move is imposing monthly fees for its Clean Village program. This initiative is supported by Goodman Fielder providing rubbish bins. Walking around this village today has been very exciting and gratifying. Everywhere you go you can see pride on the faces of all the villagers and, and, and there's no wonder why. They are proud of and should be of the bold initiative that they have undertaken here. Their clean-up campaign for this village and the way they've supported it and funded it themselves is outstanding and hasn't been done anywhere else in the country. Goodman Field is extremely proud to support them in this, in this venture that supports not only their community but it supports the environment and we hope to see this roll out across the country and, and for Gabba Gabba to be start of something bigger and better across the great nation of PNG. Meanwhile, members of Pangu Party were also present, led by party leader and communications minister Sam Basil. This is where he took time and announced the restoration of NBC Central's short wave to medium wave transmission. Berlin Diagotam, National MTV News. Both the public and private sectors have been challenged to mainstream the disability issue into their programs using the inclusive approach. This was highlighted today during the commemoration of the International Day of Persons with Disability in Port Moresby. With the disability draft bill in place, this will be used as a legal instrument to break many barriers that make rights real. This theme is transforming towards sustainable and resilient society for all calls for the public and private sector, including individuals to change the environment setting. And to raise awareness on the situations of persons with disabilities in every aspect of political, social, economic and cultural life. It aims to promote an understanding of disability issues and mobilize support for the dignity rights and well-being of persons with disability. A draft bill on disability is anticipated to break many barriers in the country to be more community-based rehabilitation. Because they are shaping and they are asking you or pleading you to listen to them so that whatever is written in the policy, in the legislation, is the way that will impact their lives. The victim threat is a senior, and it's already in place. 
is just waiting to be launched. Then you know what we will be doing. So we'll be, we want the media, you two media, you'll partner with us. But the United Nations says a person with disability must have access to use their ability to survive and live with dignity. The kind of disability requires different kind of intervention. So for that, there is a need for data. And that's a very critical part, I think, the policy should try to address. Of course, resources are limited always, uh, but it's also important to prioritize. I mean, uh, where to start and what to address uh, in the beginning and slowly going forward to address other issues. And prioritization is very critical. Meanwhile, the national government has allocated 2 million kina for disability in the 2018 national budget. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. Turning overseas now, Meghan Markle has been making her mark in the philanthropy world long before her prince came along. She says marrying a member of the royal family is a new chapter. Meghan Markle has been making her mark in the philanthropy world long before her prince came along. In fact, she's been fighting the good fight since she was 11 years of age, writing letters complaining about a sexist soap commercial. This commercial came on with the tagline for this dishwashing liquid and the tagline said, women all over America are fighting greasy pots and pans. <laughs> Two boys from my class said, yeah, that's where women belong. Her perseverance forced the soap manufacturer to change the commercial. Today, she continues this fight for equality. She recently traveled to Rwanda for World Vision and has been an advocate for women's rights, writing on how periods can hold girls back. During my time in the field, many girls share that they feel embarrassed to go to school during it is a change. It's a, new, it's a new challenge. It's a new, it's a new chapter. Yeah. While she's been hailed as a breath of fresh air for the British royal family, there are constraints to being married to a prince. So can this future feminist royal stay true to the values that she's been celebrated for? I don't think she has gone back on her advocacy of women's issues and feminist issues. I think there are ways that she can continue to, um, to be an advocate for them and to uh, shine a light on them, even as she is within the royal family. And she made it pretty clear in that interview that she was taking on a job as well as marrying a member of the royal family. A new chapter for this confident, now former actress, determined to define her role in one of the most traditional establishments in the world. At least four ships have washed up on Japan's west coast this month. It's appeared they came from North Korea on board a grand cargo. A mysterious wooden boat aimlessly drifting in the sea of Japan. Those on board, dead. Eight skeletons, all that remain. It's unclear how long they were at sea before finally washing up on Japan's northwest shores. Their battered fishing boat now the latest in a string of so-called ghost ships that have strangely appeared here. Following a pattern that suggests a curious origin, North Korea. 45 incidents of fishing boats or debris have mysteriously washed up on Japan's shores this year. Earlier in November, eight men claiming to be stranded North Korean fishermen were rescued after their boat landed in Akita Prefecture. A week earlier, officials discovered four dead on a boat that washed up on Noto Peninsula. In the same area, two days prior, the Japanese Coast Guard rescued more North Korean fishermen who asked to be sent back to their home country, indicating they weren't trying to flee. But there have been several high-profile defections this year from Japan's reclusive neighbour. The most recent earlier this month, when a soldier made a dramatic break across the demilitarised zone between North and South Korea under gunfire from his former comrades. South Korea estimates more than 30,000 have defected from North Korea in the last two decades, but a silent, unknown number never survived their escape attempts. Whether or not these ghost ships carry those trying to escape North Korea, or just fishermen blown off course, some analysts think their arrival on Japan's shores may only increase. As North Korea test-fires missiles that have flown over its island neighbour, 
Stronger UN sanctions are strapping Pyongyang's resources. Food and fuel shortages may be leaving some fishermen without enough gas for their boats or extra food supplies at the mercy of the wind and the sea should they run into trouble, forced to drift, alive or not, to the nearest shore. Yeah, with National MTV News, Trukai Sports is up next. We'll have some updates from the recently concluded 7th PNG Games. Stay tuned. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. Competition has commenced at the Pacific Mini Games in Vanuatu, beginning with football, tennis and table tennis. Athletes from 24 countries and territories will contest 14 different sports over the next 12 days. The athletes were formally accorded a rousing traditional Vanuatu welcome as the theme song, Ignite the Spirit Within, was sung. Back home now and employees of Kumul Petroleum Holdings Limited today had the opportunity to host the 2018 Commonwealth Games Baton. The Baton is currently in the country as part of its tour prior to the Games. In the lead-up to the 2018 Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast, Australia, the Games Baton was in Port Moresby today. Among organizations visited, Kumul Petroleum Holdings Limited, KPHL, a platinum supporter of the Papua New Guinea Olympic Committee, were pleased to have the Baton visit its head office. According to KPHL General Manager, Shared Services, Luke Liria, KPHL was delighted to host the Baton as they are a strong supporter of sport in Papua New Guinea. Kumul is uh, happy to be part of the Olympic movement. Uh, we, we are a sponsor to the many games as well as the uh, games in, uh, in, uh, in the um, Gold Coast uh, next year. The Baton, which carries a message from Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, has travelled for 288 days and travelled over 230,000 kilometres since its journey began on March the 13th this year. Giving everybody a chance to, to see and touch the Queen's Baton. Uh, the Queen's Baton uh, is on its way to the, the Games next year which take place in April uh, and it carries a very special message from the Queen. Uh, so the message was placed um, by Queen Elizabeth II on the 13th of March uh, into the Baton. We've just come from Kimbe where we were part of the Papua New Guinea Games closing ceremony, which was amazing to see and um, see the unification of the nation through sport. Um, and now here in Port Moresby for the day as well. The visit also provided an opportunity for KPHL to reaffirm its commitment to Team PNG when the Games get underway in May 2018. And on behalf of the people of Papua New Guinea, the company is um, happy and pleased to uh, be part of this program <coughs> and help the community. and and give, the, give a chance to our Papua New Guinea uh, athletes to aspire. The Commonwealth Games begin on March the 4th, 2018 on the Gold Coast, where the message from Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, which is currently travelling the world, will be read, bringing an end to its year-long journey. And Trukai Sports continues after these messages. Don't go away. <laughs> Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. Central Governor Robert Agarobe has commended Team Central for being crowned the champions of the 7th BSP PNG Games. Upon the team's return from Kimbe yesterday, the governor said the team's performance reflects his vision for a smart central province, saying sports will be a driving force for social development. It was not the full team that arrived yesterday, but they were given a champion's welcome. The celebrations began with a parade around the city that ended at the central province headquarters. I told both that one of the PA, the PA for East New Britain and West New Britain together with the city manager, I told them Central is going to beat you and get the seal or the cup, whatever you give us. We'll take, to, take it to central province. That's what I told them when I was in Kimbe during the official opening. And sure enough, now you can see the fruits of it here. Thank you to all our sportsmen and women. We salute you. We take our heads off. The team's success was not only celebrated, but has encouraged more commitment in developing sporting codes in Central Province. 
Our DDA in Guelda, we are going to put money aside, like what we've done, so that the challenge is for our guys to, uh, other sister uh, districts to put uh, money aside starting next year, so that we start identify talent with due respect to everybody who are here, and we plan uh, properly for uh, many games. But for central governor Robert Agarobe, the team's success has a bigger message. He says the team performs smartly, which is how he wants to run the province. I've always pushed for a smarter central province. And you guys have actually displayed that. Half the team, we still came on top. You know, we were small, but we still came on top. And that's been, that's been smart. We ran, we ran the games very smartly. We played the games very smartly. So moving, moving forward into the future, as far as central province is concerned, we are going to be running the province very, very smart. He says for 2018 and beyond, sports will be one main agenda. By 2018, 2019, we are supposed to be doing a lot of things in the province. And sports will hook onto it. You know, so I want us to work very, very hard. And I want us to play even harder. That's what we're going to start doing from now on. Team Central bagged a total of 50 goals with a final medal tally of 107. Stanley Over Jr., National MTV Sports. To Rugby League abroad now and Kangaroos coach Mal Meninga has praised his team's strong defence in the Rugby League World Cup Grand Final win again in, against England over the weekend. Meninga says this is the greatest defensive Kangaroos side he has ever seen. Lebanon, Samoa and England all failed to score a point against the Kangaroos in the finals. Australia only conceded 16 points throughout the tournament with their defence only letting in three tries. And that's it for True Guys Sports. When we come back, your weather for Tuesday. Stay tuned. Kai Sports. True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region. Brief showers expected in Port Mosby, Daru and Kerama. A shower or two as well for Alotau and Popandeta. To the Mumasi region, showers expected in Leh and Wau. Showers and thunderstorms for Medang, Wibek and Vanimo. To the New Guinea Islands region, showers and thunderstorms expected in Lorangao, Kavian, Kimbe and Buka. Showers for Kokopo and Rabao. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goruka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg, all these major centres can expect showers with early morning fog. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. And that's the new sports and weather for today, Monday the 4th of December 2017. On behalf of the MTV News team, pleasant viewing. Good night. <laughs>